Statistically, you're about 20 times more likely to die in a car accident than a train accident, despite trains moving faster and carrying hundreds more passengers. That's not an accident, that's engineering. Every day, millions of passengers board trains without a second thought. Commuters trust them, cities rely on them, and they blend into the background of daily life. But what if I told you that trains aren't just a convenient way to travel? They're one of the safest forms of transportation on the planet. But here's the strange part. Unlike cars, trains run on fixed tracks with no ability to swerve, and they take over a mile to stop completely. And yet, they're built to transport passengers more safely than almost any other vehicle. So how is that possible? And what makes trains so uniquely safe? To answer that, we need to look at where it all started in the early 19th century. Train transportation prioritized power and speed over safety. If it could move passengers and freight, it was good enough. What started as wood wooden carriages pulled by steam engines soon evolved into larger trains that were essentially boilers on wheels. These early trains were rolling death traps, poorly balanced with no braking systems, and catastrophic derailments were common. A single track defect could send the entire train tumbling off the rails like dominoes. And if they crashed, there was no safety system to protect passengers, just splintering wood and flying debris. On top of that, exposed boilers made explosions a constant threat. A single pressure buildup could turn the locomotive into a deadly bomb. Why were they built this way? Because there were no regulations. Every manufacturer built trains differently with wildly inconsistent materials, braking systems, and safety features. A passenger's safety depended entirely on which company built the train and which route they were traveling. Change finally came in the late 1800s and early 1900s, after a series of high-profile accidents led to public outrage. The first national safety standards introduced automatic air brakes, stronger coupling systems, and communication systems between crew members. For the first time, passenger safety became a priority. Now, even though these early improvements saved countless lives, they were still a far cry from what we see today. So what other changes were made, and how did engineers turn these once dangerous machines into one of the safest modes of transportation? The first major step toward making trains safer started with the tracks themselves. Early railways used primitive iron rails that frequently broke under pressure. Engineers changed that by developing stronger tracks made of steel and using a cross-tie system that spread weight evenly instead of focusing stress on single points. Modern tracks don't just support the train, they actively keep it from derailing with rails that are precisely angled to match the wheel profile. If a wheel starts to climb the rail, the shape of both components work together to guide it back down. This passive safety system works without requiring any power or human intervention. Track design wasn't just about preventing derailments, it was also about creating a more stable ride. Early trains rocked violently from side to side, making them uncomfortable and dangerous. Engineers fixed this by perfecting what's called the gauge, the exact distance between rails. Modern standard gauge tracks are precisely 4 feet 8.5 inches apart, a measurement that's been refined over decades to provide the optimal balance between stability and speed. But while engineers improved the tracks, they also needed to make sure the trains themselves could handle emergency situations. That brings us to one of the most important safety systems in modern trains, brakes. Unlike car brakes which use hydraulic pressure, train braking systems work on a completely different principle. They use compressed air, and they operate on a fail-safe design. In cars, when the braking system fails, the brakes don't work at all. But in trains, it's the opposite. When air pressure is lost, the brakes automatically engage, bringing the train to a stop. This ingenious design means that any rupture in the brake line, any loss of pressure, or any system failure will cause the train to stop instead of continuing without brakes. This single innovation revolutionized rail safety. But effective brakes weren't enough on their own. Engineers also needed to design systems that would prevent crashes before they happened, and that led to the development of signal systems. Early trains relied entirely on timetables and manual communication, meaning two trains could easily end up on the same track heading toward each other. The solution wasn't just better scheduling, it was technology. The first block signal systems divided tracks into sections where only one train could operate at a time. But these systems weren't foolproof. They still relied on human operators to set signals correctly and train crews to obey them. Modern signaling goes much further, 
using computerized systems that automatically track train positions. Some advanced systems, like positive train control, can actually override the engineer and stop the train if it's exceeding speed limits or approaching danger. PTC has been called one of the most significant safety advances in railroad history, but it didn't come without controversy. More on that later. First, let's look at how trains protect passengers during those rare accidents that do occur. In a crash, the greatest danger to passengers isn't just the initial impact, it's what happens after. Modern passenger trains are designed with crumple zones at the front and rear that absorb energy, protecting the passenger cars in the middle. This design philosophy is similar to cars, but on a much larger scale and with a crucial difference. While car crumple zones protect a single cabin, train crumple zones are focused on protecting entire passenger cars. The physics behind this design comes down to energy management. In a collision, the enormous kinetic energy of a moving train has to go somewhere, either into destroying the train itself or into the passengers. Engineers ensure that the structure absorbs as much energy as possible, leaving less to injure passengers. Beyond impact protection, passenger car design has evolved significantly as well. Early train cars had rigid seats bolted to wooden floors, offering almost no protection in a crash. Modern passenger cars feature seats that are designed to stay anchored during impacts, while interior surfaces are padded and free of sharp edges. Even the materials used in modern trains are selected for fire resistance, with standards that far exceed those of other vehicles. Training includes not just normal operations, but hundreds of emergency scenarios, ensuring that crews know exactly what to do when something goes wrong. Many train operators use sophisticated simulators similar to those used by airline pilots, allowing crews to practice responding to dangerous situations without any real-world risk. Beyond initial training, crew fatigue is carefully managed with strict limits on working hours and regular health screenings for safety-critical positions. But despite all these safety measures and training programs, people still worry about train accidents when they make headlines. But how do trains actually compare to other forms of transportation in terms of safety? In the United States, rail passengers experience about 0.43 fatalities per billion passenger miles compared to 7.3 fatalities for car occupants, meaning cars are roughly 17 times more dangerous per mile traveled. And the statistics are similar in other developed countries. Trains consistently rank among the safest ways to travel, alongside commercial aviation. But these safety records aren't the same worldwide. In some countries with less developed rail systems or fewer safety regulations, train accidents remain relatively common. Why? The difference comes down to investment and enforcement. In countries with modern safety systems and strict enforcement, train travel has become extraordinarily safe. But implementing these systems requires significant investment that not all countries can afford or are willing to make. The United States railroad industry learned this lesson the hard way in 2008 when a Metrolink commuter train collided head-on with a freight train in Chatsworth, California, killing 25 people and injuring 135. The investigation revealed that the passenger train's engineer had been texting and ran a red signal. The crash highlighted a critical gap in rail safety. Even in developed countries, human error could still lead to catastrophic accidents. This disaster became the catalyst for Congress to pass the Rail Safety Improvement Act of 2008, which mandated the implementation of positive train control technology on most passenger and hazardous material routes. PTC uses GPS, satellite, and ground-based technologies to monitor train position and speed, automatically applying the brakes if the train operates unsafely. It's designed to prevent train-to-train -train collisions, derailments caused by excessive speed, and unauthorized train movements. Essentially, it adds a computerized safety layer that can override human mistakes. But implementing this system wasn't easy. Railroad companies argued that the technology was expensive and complex to implement across the entire U.S. rail network. The original deadline of 2015 was extended multiple times, until finally, in 2020, the system was fully operational on all required track. The cost? Over $13 billion. But the investment paid off. Since full implementation, PTC has prevented numerous potential accidents, catching human errors before they could lead to disaster. But while train travel itself has become remarkably safe, there's still one major area of concern where trains interact with the public, railroad crossings. Every year, hundreds of people die at grade crossings where roads and rail lines intersect. These accidents rarely harm train passengers, but they're devastating for the occupants of vehicles struck by trains. 
And this raises an important question. Who's responsible for preventing these accidents? Unlike most safety systems we've discussed, crossing safety depends largely on the public following rules and heating warnings. Engineers have implemented multiple safeguards, including crossing gates, flashing lights, bells, and signs. But ultimately, these systems rely on drivers and pedestrians to obey them. Newer technologies are helping address this problem. Some crossings now have four-quadrant gates that block both lanes of traffic in both directions preventing drivers from going around the gates. Other crossings use obstacle detection systems that can alert approaching trains if a vehicle is stuck on the tracks. But the most effective solution has been to eliminate crossings altogether by building bridges or underpasses that separate trains from road traffic. Another unique aspect of train safety is how they handle dangerous cargo. While passenger trains get more public attention, freight trains carry millions of tons of hazardous materials every year, from flammable liquids to toxic chemicals. Safety standards for these shipments have evolved dramatically, especially after high-profile incidents like the 2013 Lac Megantic rail disaster in Quebec, where a runaway train carrying crude oil derailed and exploded, killing 47 people. Modern tank cars are designed with thicker shells, thermal protection, and reinforced valves, making them far more resistant to puncture or leakage during accidents. Additionally, the routing of hazardous materials is carefully planned to minimize risks to populated areas. As train technology continues to evolve, safety systems are becoming increasingly sophisticated. But is there a point where adding more safety features stops making a meaningful difference? Trains are already among the safest modes of transportation, with accident rates far lower than cars or buses. Yet new technologies continue to emerge. From AI-powered inspection systems that can detect track defects to automated trains that eliminate human error entirely. These innovations promise to make trains even safer, but at what cost? One of the biggest debates in rail safety is automation. Should trains be fully automated with no human operators? Some countries like Japan, Singapore, and parts of Europe have already implemented driverless train systems on certain routes. Their reasoning? Computerized systems don't get tired, don't get distracted, and consistently follow protocols perfectly. The results have been impressive with automated systems demonstrating safety records that match or exceed those of human operators. But not everyone agrees, including many train engineers who argue that human judgment remains essential in complex or unexpected situations. Beyond automation, improved track inspection is another frontier. Using lasers, ultrasound, and machine learning algorithms, modern inspection vehicles can detect tiny flaws in rails before they become dangerous. These systems are far more accurate than visual inspections catching problems that human inspectors might miss, and preventing derailments before they happen. Perhaps the most exciting development is the concept of smart trains and smart infrastructure, where the entire rail system communicates continuously, sharing data about track conditions, train performance, and potential hazards in real time. This vision of a fully integrated safety system would represent the culmination of nearly two centuries of rail safety evolution, from those dangerous early steam engines to an intelligent network that can predict and prevent accidents before they occur. But regardless of how train technology evolves, one question remains. How much safety is enough? And at what point does it become too expensive for the marginal benefits gained? In the end, the trains of the future may look very different from the ones we know today. But one thing is certain, whether through artificial intelligence, smarter materials, or better infrastructure, engineers will continue asking the same question. How do we make one of the safest forms of transportation even safer?